Hello there, escapers. My name is Xenobilis and welcome to this brand new series that I've decided to do in order to help document my progress towards the trim comp cape again. Feels like I'm getting it for the second time from scratch, just the amount of requirements there are. But also, I wanted to help you guys out in terms of perhaps some tips and tricks, some strategies, some motivation maybe as well, if you guys are interested in going for the trim comp cape. And hopefully you guys can follow this journey with me and learn a thing or two as well. Hopefully it motivates you. I'm sure it'll be entertaining the number of mistakes I make. Don't even need to mention that. But anyway, let's dive right in. So... As you may know, I resumed playing RuneScape last month in January 2021 and when I logged in, I was greeted with a huge wall of unlocks before I could reclaim my trim comp kit because I've been away for two whole years. There were so many unlocks and I was way past the grace period for all of them. But the number one priority was to do the Anachronia base camp because this was one of those time-gated ones, a bit like player and ports. Which, by the way, should also be your number one priority if you want to go for trim or comp and you've never done it before. So initially with the base camp, it's pretty simple. You want to max out all of the base upgrades, which is a comp requirement anyway. So I started off by allocating workers to unlock the lodestone firstly, and then the storehouse, sleeping quarters, and then the town hall. So you need to upgrade the town hall before you upgrade any of the other two, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, I just did this for the best part of two months now, and it's working pretty well. I am almost at the point where I have fully upgraded the base camp area just waiting on the last few bits and pieces for the sleeping quarters t3 update but the big mistake i made was that i didn't really consider the ranch out of time i was kind of thinking okay let's get this whole thing done before we considered the ranch out of time so what i did was that i sort of stopped in the middle of the process just to open up a small pen in the ranch out of time so i could do frogs and salamanders because obviously the breeding log for the ranch out of time was one of the biggest blockers for trim as well but it was stuck behind this wall of time-gated base camp resources. But in actual fact, what I really needed to do was, as soon as I was done with the tier 3 storehouse, then I could start building the breeding pen, which costs 100k resources. I forget which ones, but 100k of three different types of resources, which you can only store once you have the storehouse tier 3. And then I should have built the breeding pen, started breeding as many creatures there as possible and then finished off the base camp upgrade and probably gone back to the ranch out of time and start building all the different pens unfortunately the way i did it was completely wrong building a small pen and then a medium pen and then going back to into the base camp upgrades wouldn't recommend it guys uh hopefully you learned from that mistake of mine but anyway it hasn't cost me a huge amount of time because well trim's gonna take me a while anyway as you'll see the next thing i worked on was play run farms now you're going to see a bunch of different clips in the background. But initially, me being as lazy as I was, I initially YOLO'd it. I'm going to be honest with you, I absolutely YOLO'd it. Because all I did it was for the XP and with whatever animals that were already there. So I believe I had dragons and sheep, if I'm not wrong. Or maybe mushrooms. So I'd actually finished the dragon log just before I left in about January, February of 2019. So I didn't need to do it any longer except for the XP. But for actually a couple of weeks, I didn't do anything. I didn't change any of the animals. I didn't go for the breeding log. But then I decided to wake up and uh, start going for the breeding log. And actually, it was pretty fun. PFF, if you've never done it before, is actually pretty fun. You need a daddy animal and a mommy animal and basically get them to do some magic while you sleep. And when you wake up, there will be a third entity in there. And that third entity is what's going to help you complete your breeding log. So it's good to know that uh, procreation in RuneScape actually helps you progress towards the trim completion escape. If only that applied to life. Anyway, so this actually gives you a bunch of XP if you do it right. And if you check frequently, even if you're only going for the breeding log and not for the uh, most optimized XP rates or anything like that. Now, right now, I'm stuck on my Harlequin Cow and my Sacred Yak to finish the POF breeding log. Pretty much got everything else, so uh, that's really annoying. But I've got to say a massive thank you to my friend uh, Sumo, the legendary Sumo, makes a return once again for lending me two of her yaks and two of her cows to try and help me get 
these two bread as soon as possible. It's not worked yet, but I'm sure it will soon. And the thing I would say about POF is it's actually decent XP. Not as much as if you were actively farming trees and cacti and mushrooms and things like that, but still pretty good for a low effort activity. What I would suggest is to start it as soon as possible. Either get shiny versions of the animals you need to breed from your friends or world 2 ge or from looking online and asking all the forums because that will save you a huge amount of time or you can do it from scratch like i did for the most part because i had time on my hands really i wasn't blocked by this because the ranch out of time would take far longer than this would i barely even started the ranch out of time i finished frogs but i'm struggling with salamanders which is why i'm regretting not making that breeding pen more and more anyway that's what i've done for pof so far almost done with it thankfully I've started breeding some other animals in the small and medium pens to maximize my farming XP gains because, of course, I forgot to mention this, I need to get 120 farming. The grace period was long over and I'm about 30 mil XP from 120 farming, which isn't too bad. I'll probably get there by the time I finish the Ranch Out of Time breeding log. So that's enough for farming. Let's move on to archaeology. Now, archaeology is an absolutely brilliant skill. I've been really enjoying it. It's very structured very well thought out i've got to say you've got excavations basically every level there's something new to excavate or discover or a mystery or an area or something like that you've got artifacts you've got materials you've got mysteries which you solve by excavating and as you go along you've got collections to finish before you move on to the next level and uh, that's been the key to my enjoyment of archaeology initially i just do the best locations i could at any given level without checking whether i'd finish the collections there but now I actually make sure I finish the collections before moving on to the next spot because that means I won't need to go back there again but also it will allow me to uh, get some extra artifacts along the process to get more archaeology XP in one go. I've also been doing my qualifications of course. Uh, one of the most important qualifications to do early on is the associate qualification for the auto screener. It's been an absolute game changer. I don't have to go screen the soil myself or bank it or anything like that. But I've really enjoyed the structure of the skill and uh, the amount of detail they put into it is remarkable. It really is. So I've got to say props to Jagex for that because this is not a skill I thought I'd enjoy. Being uh, the typically grindy and sometimes stereotyped skill in real life if I'm going to be honest. Uh, <laughs> but archaeology in RuneScape is very fun and if RuneScape archaeology is anything to go by I've got to say hats off to these guys in real life. They're doing a tremendous job of digging up the past and finding out what happened to our ancestors and things like that. But coming back to RS, right now I am just under level 90 as we speak. So I've made a huge amount of progress. It's basically all I do when I'm AFKing. And it's really paying off in terms of my commitment to finishing collections and basically finishing everything I can before moving on to the next stage. Because I think it will ensure I won't need to come back and grind it out after I reach 120. I should be able to finish all the trim requirements once I hit 120. And with double XP coming up, I plan to do archaeology a lot in that as well for the double base precision, which should allow me to get artificial effects twice as quickly hopefully in terms of the highlights of my 80 odd levels so far i think it's the imkandomatic because i gotta say i didn't see the point of it being a level 80 archaeology requirement to wield it but actually taking far far longer to actually get all the pieces because the higher the level you are the quicker you get the pieces that made no sense to me at all so i spent quite a bit of time camping this in the warforge dig site i finally managed to get it at level 86 uh, after a bunch of different things including the archaeology pet would you believe it i got the archaeology pet around uh, level 84 or something like that now i was just thinking to myself why on earth am i getting the pet when i don't need it i just need all four of these shards so i can unlock the damn thing but anyway i was happy to have archie by my side and uh, i had been slacking off augmenting my crystal pickaxe so as soon as i got my encando one i augmented it as soon as possible after having unlocked ancient tools and perking it up with hone 6 and furnace 4 fortune 3 these days what i do to maximize my gains is to use a water fiend familiar which is actually pretty useful because it has a five percent chance to duplicate the resource that you get both materials and artifacts which is huge uh, i also use the brooch the brooch of the gods which helps with 
invention components. Grace of the Elves for Seren Spirits. Uh, I'm just trying to get the HSR before I get 120 Archaeology, but uh, obviously the RNG gods need to be on my side for that. And finally, I've just come across this little potion called the Power Burst of Opportunity. Neat little potion. Uh, I basically drink it just before maxing out the sprite focus so that I get times 10 precision when I hit 100% sprite focus rather than times 5. But yeah, really enjoying the AFK nature of this skill and uh, the slow but steady concerted effort to get 120 at the same time as finishing all the other requirements around the skill. So those are the three main things I'll be doing. Base camp, farming via POF or ranch out of time and then archaeology. What else have I done? I haven't done a huge amount of the smaller requirements to be honest uh, i think the most enjoyable one i've done so far is totem hunting so i've been uh, digging up a bunch of zygomites around uh, anachronia that's been kind of fun actually uh, just going around the map slowly a uh, bit of forced exploration there but i'm not complaining it's been pretty fun got a couple of totems from that already managed to use a fully completed totem from doing that uh, to recruit a couple of uh, new researchers into my team i lost a salty title earlier actually but uh, it turns out all i need to do was to talk to a penguin in uh, the pub in port sarum literally all i needed to do was that i'd already got the title back in 2016 17 i think and uh, I found this later, but one of the biggest updates they'd introduced for Trim was right when I quit the game. And I had no idea about this, but on the 24th of June 2019, they removed the Castle Wars requirement. Would you believe it? The requirement that I'd spent thousands of hours of my life doing okay, not thousands, I only had to do a 1500 games compared to the people that had to do. 5,000 games, but uh, yeah, I wasn't really too sure how to feel about that. Initially, I thought, how could they do this? I spent so much time and you don't have to do anything. The classic uh, ranty dialogue. But then I actually, I took a step back and thought about it. I was like, okay, fair enough. It's a dumb requirement. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I still think they could have made it a bit different, a bit more engaging, much shorter as well. But the fact that they removed Cast Wars entirely is a huge bummer for me, who had to do it for so long in 2017. But hey, they added the salty title and the sandy title. And you know what? I already got those. I've already got a guide for the salty title, which a lot of people have watched. So um, hopefully you guys found it useful and people are still using it for trim. I got the sandy title before I quit, but they've added the POF log and a few more artisans workshop requirements. So I kind of like that, to be honest. After I had a bit of time to cool down, I think I did appreciate that and uh, I'm completely on board with it. They also made a few other changes like uh, removing the Reaper title from comp which makes sense to me. You shouldn't be forced to um, have to do high level bossing just to get comp cape because comp is different from high level bossing. But this also meant that um, the max and comp capes lost a bit of their stats, making them no longer the best capes in the game. So I've been using a combination of my expert skill capes as well as the kiln capes, which means I'm losing a lot of back room no bolts, guys. Yep, bleeding a lot of GP there. What else have I done? Uh, I did the 20th anniversary quest and the Vault of Shadows mini quest once they reduced the requirements from 107 archaeology to 58 archaeology. Gotta say both were pretty fun to do. I've heard that Jagex haven't released too many quests recently, which I'm not sure how to feel about, but the Elder God War storyline, the first of which is coming out on Monday, is going to be really interesting. After five years of God Wars 2, we're going to have a new God Wars, hopefully much harder, much more interesting, much more nuanced, not just combat focused but also skilling and activity focused and i think that's all i've done in terms of my progress to comp keep so uh, a whistle stop tour of the last month and a half guys hope you've enjoyed it but looking forward now i've been doing some preparation for double xp so the main thing i want to do is to get stocked up on my potions i've already got 120 herb law which again is a very nice coincidence because they've added it as a comp cape requirement now but i want to upgrade all my potions all my supreme overloads to elder overloads and so on so here's my plan for double XP on his screen now. So I want to convert all 2000 of my Supreme Overloads into Elder Overloads. Uh, I want to make 500 of those into Elder Overload Salves. I'm going to make 4000 Enhanced Replenishment Potions, which is going to cost me a lot of money because of the Adrenaline Crystals, but 
I think it's going to be worth it to upgrade that. I've already got like 2,000 regular replenishment potions. I'm going to make 1,000 adrenaline renewal potions because I don't think I'll use them as much as the enhanced replenishment potions, even though they're slightly better. I'm going to finish things off with 400 perfect plus potions because that's all the crystal tree blossom I have and a thousand extreme prayer potions because I'm in the process of making the blessed flask. Uh, so these are the only things you can use to top them up. So looking forward to that actually, that should be a neat little item once I get that. What other plans do I have for double XP? They're all focused around getting my comp back as soon as possible. So um, farming, a hell of a lot of farming to do. So gonna do all the fruit trees, the wood trees, the cactus, and as many ultra growth potions as I can afford to buy. I've also got a few other smaller requirements uh, that I should probably do in double XP like Herbie Werby and construction contracts because they're both trim requirements plus you get bonus XP when you do them in double XP so why not and the rest of the time when I finish my herb law and I'm not doing farming it's going to be archaeology not the most efficient skill but I really only need comp I don't really care much for grinding XP if it doesn't contribute towards PVM or completionist because that's what I'm about guys that's what this channel's about so archaeology it is I hope to uh, get max back in the middle of double XP but I hope you enjoyed this uh, sort of rambly first episode i didn't record anything live any live voiceover so it's all been in retrospect let me know what you thought of it um please do drop a like below if you enjoyed it and you want me to continue this series please let me know also in the comments whether you prefer this style of video or you want to see more live voiceover type video i'm definitely planning to do a lot more trim completionist guides in the future so do look out for that. Hopefully they continue to help the community. I do know that a lot of people have mentioned my trim completionist guides while I've been away and they've been wanting to go for comp. So uh, that's really heartening to see as a content creator. I hope you have a great double XP guys. A uh, very chilled one at home, I'm sure, in these trying times. But also one filled with XP and gains. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.